You are listening to the IFH Podcast Network. For more amazing filmmaking and screenwriting podcasts, just go to ifhpodcastnetwork.com. I'm like, what are you doing exactly? When I hear people talking about that, say, what, what are you doing? You know, like, it's, I know people need different lenses for, for different types of films, but come on. We don't all need this stuff, you know. I mean, it just seems like sometimes there's an obsession over the equipment. You know, once I get that equipment, then I'll make this movie. And once I get that, once you know, it's like, make it. Shut up and make it. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 88 of the Dave Bullis Podcast. Joining me today is guest Richard T. Wilson. Richard is an Emmy Award-winning filmmaker. Richard is best known for the critically acclaimed television series Maple Ave, and his current project, The Halloween Girl, is available now on Vimeo. And again, there's links to all of this in the show notes. Not a lot of intro notes this week, so let's get right to the interview. Dave, doing great. Honored to be on the show. Thanks oh. to our mutual friend, Mike Biasel. So, <laughs> Mr. Awesome himself, you know, we love yeah. Mike. I've known Mike too many, I, I shouldn't say too many years. I've known Mike way longer than I'm going to say on air, but <laughs> he's terrific. Very talented guy. Yeah, Mike is a very talented guy. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's so great that he was able to, you know, introduce us. And, uh, you know, maybe Mike will be on the show one day. Maybe when I can finally, you know, get Mike to to come on, uh, you know, he can, uh, he can talk because, you know, Mike, Mike's had a pretty interesting life too. I will. Yes, he does. He absolutely does. With us. I mean, he's done so many things that we just kind of, I met him at the, did you know him from full circle or the record I, shop or did you meet him during, uh, during film or I actually met him way back. I actually met him we, on a film set. Oh, okay. Okay. I met him as a kid <laughs> 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 when he, when he ran, the, the coolest independent record shop of all time, Full Circle Records in Blackwood, New Jersey, which, you know, it goes a ways back now. But I mean, that was the place to go and hang out. And, and Mike was just, you know, he, he was basically out of a movie. You know, the whole place was just I was going to write a movie about the place, actually. But uh, no, he's a great guy. And he's been working with us um, for years now. So um, doing lighting, uh, he's going to be doing some cinematography in the coming year and all that. So, you know, we can't say enough good things about him. Malibu Mike, as Adam calls him. But anyway. <laughs> now you should write a movie about that. <laughs> it would be a good one, let me tell you. Nobody would believe it, but it would be a good one. Um, yeah. So, you know, yeah, about you, about you Richard, you know, I, I, you know, I was looking at your bio, and, you know, you're an Emmy Award winner. Uh, you know, you've worked with PBS, you know, the Independent Film Channel. So, you know, the question I wanted to ask you to begin with is, you know, how did you get started, you know, making films? Well, I mean, it started out uh, – actually started out in the theater many years ago and I always wanted to do films at the time I was a kid, but a little kid. And, but you know, it was kind of hard to get into way back when. So I had an interest in theater because I was into theater because of Linda Bowie and Peter Gabriel and, and Jim Morris. And I said, well, that's, they use theater. That's cool. Well, let me check that out. So I got into theater, really enjoyed it. Started writing for the theater. Long story short, um, I was asked in my twenties to write educational plays I said, no freaking way, man. <laughs> I said, I was, I was playwright in residence over at the Ritz Theater in Oakland, New Jersey, uh, many, many moons ago. And, and they said, would you please, you know, try this? And, you know, it would be really nice if you just gave it a shot. And I said, okay, I couldn't say now. So I sat down one night, Willy Wonka was on, one of my favorite films. And I thought, well, I never saw anything as a kid that would come to our school that was any good. So, you know, I said, let me write something that I would have wanted to see. And I'm watching my, my movie here. And I think this is cool. So I took a stab at it and I got hooked and I started to write things that were basically <clears throat> awareness pieces. And I thought, well, this is a fun gig and I'll do this, but I'll still write my own heavy stuff in the meantime, you know. And what happened was it turned into a business. Um, we did a lot of work with <clears throat> with nonprofits across the country and it started to grow I left the Ritz for my own company, and what was happening is a lot of people were saying, we love to play, but we can't afford to tour it. Can we make a video? 
and that's how that's how this whole thing started. And and, and as, as that was happening, digital was really starting to blow up. So it's a long time ago. Um, and then we would farm stuff out. You know, well, I'd, I'd hire directors, I'd be writing the scripts, and we'd get all the actors in. But uh, and that was great. But then after a while, we started to lose business because it was too much money to farm out all the video stuff. <laughs> so I'd been reading about it in the meantime, and I said to my wife. One night I said, we got to go into this digital video thing. She goes, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, she was, she was, well, you do theater. You don't do this. But I said, no, I think I can do this. I really do. So she, she believed in me. I, I started uh, making the transition and we started making films. And we worked, like I said, with, with uh, nonprofits all across the country, raising awareness about different health, social issues. The thing is, I'm writing the same stuff that I was writing when I was starting out, which are family dramas, essentially, with a twist. The difference is they're focused, whether they're about problem gambling or suicide awareness. Kids in school, we did something called Maple Ave, a TV series, which was very successful. We got the Emmy nominations and won an Emmy for one of the episodes. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm basically doing what I would be doing no matter what. I just figured out a way to turn, turn it into a living. And, uh, and that's where we're at today. We started a new company called Mad Shelley Films um, to do stuff that was kind of just stuff I wanted to do that I couldn't do within outreach arts. Um, so we started with the Halloween Girl this year, and it's doing really well. And, and that's you know, it's great to hear, you know, that you were able, you know, to, to sort of build this whole future for yourself, you know, build this entire you know, business for yourself. Uh, you know, because, you know, one of the things, I, you know, as I talk to some of the filmmakers that come on here, that's sort of the impetus where they're sort of at a crossroads and eventually they say, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go for this and see where the cards may – and the cards will fall where they may. Right, exactly. And, and the thing of it is – I'm sure you read the same things where people are talking about the, you know, these programmers at different film festivals. They talk about uh, the complaints they have over and over again. Our people are sending in these films, and they're essentially reels instead of films, like for shorts or something. Mm -hmm. Like they're saying, look, I can do this. Hey, look, I did this shot. Isn't this great? You know, hire me. And it's not really about – I would say to anybody, everybody's too interested in making an impression to get a gig out in Hollywood, you know, or anywhere for that matter. Instead of focusing, well, why are you in this business? If you're in this business basically just to, you know – because you, you want to be rich and famous, well, cool, but be honest about that. You know, if you're if you're if you're focused on the, you know, all the all the superficial crap, you're you, you're forgetting that you're there to tell a story. And I don't care what kind of story; it could just be flat out entertainment. It could be just you know, flat out horror film, comedy. It doesn't matter. It's still about telling stories. And the complaint has become everybody is so slick and and corporate, and it's it's just that that they're forgetting to tell stories. Everybody should be in this business and stay in this business because they have a story to tell. And I know that sounds corny as hell, but that's the truth. And I think people forget about that. And they're really not in the business to tell stories. They're in the business because they think, oh, I'm going to become rich and famous. It'll solve all my problems or something. You know, that was something, honestly, everybody thinks about that stuff. And I've been fortunate enough to, you know, have those meetings and stuff like that. But I was always uncomfortable with them. And I always felt obligated. Like I thought you should really be hyped for this. And I was, I was very excited. You know, fly out. We, we had a, um, an opportunity to uh, sell Maple Lab to a universal studios affiliate at the hatchery, which had children's programming and stuff. Well, before I started, they said, Oh, we've got to come out here. We're interested in the show. And I was so excited. You know, I'm on the plane flying out with, you know, gonna, my, my manager's there and, you know, we're having the meeting, man. You know, I mean, this was very exciting, but the truth is, it, it, the experience was exciting. I was glad to go, but that was not what I was into this for. You know, I mean, really, I felt like it was almost like, well, you're obligated, man. You're an indie filmmaker. It's hard enough. You better, you know, push it all the way. But deep down, I kind of look at the landscape and do you want to be part of that club? Look at these movies. How many do you actually like? How many do you actually respect? And if the answer is no, but hey, man, it's, it's, it's money and riches and all that stuff. Well, then you have to ask yourself why you're in the business. And I think the mistake a lot of people make is they're just in it for the, the wrong reasons or they're not or they don't believe enough in themselves. And they should do just what you said before. It's time to, you know, make the leap and jump in with both feet. And, you know, if, if you really have something to say, you're going to make out great. 
you will land. You will land where you're supposed to. And people don't have the faith that they will, and they either pull out, you know, or they keep going in the wrong direction trying to write and produce something that they think is going to, you know, that they're going to get picked up, man. You know, this is going to be, you know, their, their ticket. And then once they get in, well, then they'll make the film that, you know, the, the, the one they've been waiting to make. They'll never make that film unless they're starting to make it now. So I've made, I, 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 my diatribe is now over. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, I just think about this stuff all the time. And the older I get, you know, I mean, you start to realize this kind of stuff. You think about, um, uh, you know, you, you 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 start to realize that every time those situations would come up and you'd get a you'd get a shot, you'd always feel obligated to go for it. But I never felt right about it because I want to make the uh, make the films and tell the stories that I want to tell, and I know I can't tell them in today's setup. You know, Hollywood is different from when you were a kid, and I, I can I know you're younger than me, and def, you know, and, and it's just changed. I mean, we, we've got reboots every two weeks, you know, of comic book movies, and I, I love a good comic book movie, but you know, I, I think I, I think you can be independent, you can um, make a living. I do, I, I, I you know, um, at doing this, but you've got to say, well, what what are my strengths? Where do I fit? And how can I take what I do and love and connect it to something that people really want and people can use? And I can do exactly what I've set out to do. I, I love what I do. I don't feel like, oh, you know, I did this. I wish I, you know, I, I wish I, I do this, but I really wish I could do this. I don't feel that way at all. You know, I'm not saying every day is a joy. You know, it's hard work and, you know, it keeps you up at night. Um, <laughs> but I, it does, man. But, but I love it. And I wouldn't do anything differently. And I think I, I think if you are coming at it with that perspective and you really have a you know a hunger to do this stuff, you'll do it until you die and you'll be fine. You'll have horrible years, but you'll be fine, you know. Um, <laughs> so that would true. be that would be my advice, you know, to, to people. Just look look within yourself. Yeah. You, know? you know, you raised a good point too, because you know, I, I one time hired a cinematographer uh, because he had a one, he had an excellent camera package. He had the red, and two, uh, he had this great reel. And you know, when I when I hired him, he was ver- kind of standoffish, but I kind of brushed it off. And uh, right. I didn't think, you know, I didn't want to be that. I didn't want to jump to conclusions. Uh, but when he got on the set, him and I, literally, uh, we were fine at first, and all of a sudden, he just he just started to explode at people. Because I realized after the shoot uh, what happened. He is not a film cinematographer. What he wants to do is he wants to film like concerts and like circus performers and really, you know, interesting stuff that is very, very um, has a lot. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot, like a lot of. Um, he does a lot of slow motion work. Right? He did do right. a lot of slow motion work. So, like you know, he would do fire dancers, and then he would you know the the you know the the video would speed up, and then it would slow right. down, and then it would go, and then he would you would see the trail of the fires as the, as the embers are going around. Right, and right. It, and it yeah. looked very visually appealing. But man, oh man, was this guy a sack of shit as a person. <laughs> <laughs> Well, exactly. It's it, it. You know, I mean, I heard you guys talking. I listened to your your, your podcast, uh, your, your last podcast, and you guys were talking about team, having a good team, mm-hmm. and that's crucial. And I mean, I'm I, you know, I'm laughing and joking about Mike. I really love Mike, and I mean it because Mike, it, the team we have, is phenomenal. The guy who the, who's been with me the longest has been with me since he was 19. That's 14 years, and. And we built a team around, you know, uh, him and, and we've got Mike, we've got Kevin, we've got Carol, you know, we, I mean, it's a great team. And, and the thing is, I'm, I'm very picky about who is on the crew because it's, it's also, it's, it, you know, yeah, you got to do the job, but you've really, really got to have heart. You've really got to want to do it. You've got to be excited about it and want to be there, you know, and be into it. I mean, it sounds very hippy dippy, but it's, you got to have, you all got to have the same vibe. You know, you've got to, you know, you've got to, you really have to be a team. It can't just be like, like some, sometimes the way people cast a film. Well, oh, well, they look great. Oh, they'll be great. And then you get them. They, well, number one, you didn't realize that they couldn't act. 
you know, and then you have them on set and you're going to, you, you know, uh, you know uh, I love you now change. It's one of those things. And you, it's the same thing with a crew. You really have to take a lot of time thinking about who you want. And I mean, it's good to, um, you, you know, I mean, you're, you're taking a shot with actors to begin with. I mean, how, or when you go out, do you, are you going to like a casting agency? Or are you going to theater companies? Where, where are you, where are you pulling your people from when you do something, for instance? Uh, right now where I pull people from it's, it's in terms of actors. Yeah. Right. And actors. Um, well, actually I do two things. Uh, one is I do actually contact a, a casting agency and, uh, if, I if I can't work out something with them, um, the right. last the last time what I did was, and this actually worked out pretty well for me. Uh, I actually had very thorough auditions. What I did was I had three layers. Um, I had a I casted the first thing I did was I casted a huge net, and even if okay. somebody submitted who didn't even look like you know the part, I still said you know what this person might be able to change my mind. Let's bring them in, and you know I spent a literally an entire day. Uh, I got actually had a private studio. We had a we had all the the amenities, uh, and, and we were able to hold these all these auditions. And uh, from there, we I weeded them down, weeded them down, weeded them down, and finally, you know, uh, we did, we did pretty well. Sorry to answer your question with, <laughs> with a no, little no, bit. no, that, this is this is part of what I was asking. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the thing. I mean, you're getting you're 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 doing. You're going it, but I'm saying you know how hard you worked with with that particular actor, for instance. Mm-hmm. You know that you were looking for. Okay, the thing is, if your crew, man, you're, they're with you all the time. You've got to like they're. I mean, they're as close to your second family. You know, I mean, as anything. I mean, and and uh, you know, the crew truly feels like my second family, um, and I can rely on them. And, and you know, they have my back, and I have theirs. You know, I mean, we're. It's 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 a uh, you know it's kind of like we're all you know in the war together you know, and, and we know we can rely on this one will help with this and this one you know you know and it's everybody does a little bit of everything it's not just you know Mike's just working over there on the lights today well we're all doing everything at once because we all work well together and I think if people put more thought into um, that and then if they had a great crew and then you know all the pre production stuff. You know, I mean, I hear these stories from people that they, they're out there on a the set and everybody's kind of scratching their heads, wondering what they're going to do. And hours are slipping by and all this. It's like, well, why didn't you think of this before? You know, but I think people are afraid. I, I think people are intimidated. And I think that's what it is. I don't really think it's laziness. I don't think it's, well, I don't really feel like it. I got something to do. I'm going to go to a show. You know, I think it's more, I think you get, I think you freeze. You know, I find it intimidating um, when we're getting ready. And I've been doing this for a long time. You know, it's still always you know, a little intimidating. But I think if you spend more time preparing for a lot of this stuff and over prepare, you're still going to have crap go wrong. Right. I mean, yeah. I, 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 you, you sound like a guy who prepares. You sound like somebody who's like very, you know, and you're, you're, you're out there. You've done all your work. And what happens? Right. Shit's going to go wrong. You're going to have things, things go sideways. Where the hell is Susie Q? Where is Donnie? You know, <laughs> where are they? Where the hell are they? Well, they're stuck on route 73 and there's a traffic jam and, you know, and then they you know, their dog got sick this morning and, you know, you know, that's going to happen. You just, but you have to know going in, you know, and, um, if you're not prepared to begin with and you're, well, we'll figure it out on set and everybody will be cool and everybody will be, well, it's never going to be like that. You know, you work with what you have, but it's important to, spend the time to make sure you have the right people for the right gig. You know, I mean, it's all common sense, but I don't think people think about it. Yeah. You know, I always wondered, you know, why filmmakers always work with the same cast and crew on, you know, it's just like, you know, another movie, but it's a different whole, it's a, it's a same cast and crew, but different movie. And I, and I finally realized that now why Tim Burton always works with the same people, you know, why David O. Russell works with the same people, right? Because, you know, you get into a groove and you start to realize, you know, Hey, you work, Similar to how I work, uh, you know, and the crew, they all know they they all know each other, and they all, you know, when what one person's strength is, another person's weakness, uh, you know, right. his weakness, uh, you exactly. know, you you can cover each other's backs that way. And uh, you know, I, I've realized when you're building a team, one of the things I, I do now is, you know, I, I ask for referrals, but I also, you know, I also ask, you know, 
you know, seriously, you know, uh, you know, what is your biggest strength? What do you think your biggest strength is? What do you think your biggest weakness is? Uh, you know, I want to, you know, and, and just sitting down and talking with somebody just, just like this is it tells you a lot because if they're crazy, usually that <laughs> seeps out because it starts to seep yeah. out. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, you know, there was one, t- you know, there's a, there's been a couple of times, you know, I've worked with actors, you know, years ago and, uh, they were supposed to be on set and, I get a call from the girl and she's like, Dave, I'm not going to be able to make it today. And I said, why, what happened? And she's, you know, Oh, well, I, I, I something came up. I have things to do. Basically. I, I mean, I could hear it in the background that she was at the beach. I could hear it. Clear as day. I could hear everything <laughs> oh going God. on and she's oh, on the beach, you know, no. calling me from, from someone's phone. And I said, okay. Oh, no. I said, you know, I said, you realize that you have an, you, you have a, a, a duty here. I said, you know, you promised us that you were going to be here. And she's like, I know right. it's so killer, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that was like, I mean, that was probably what, six years ago when I was, you know, right around the time, actually about five years ago, I, I made my student film about six years ago. And, right. um, I, and, uh, I actually learned more th- doing that, doing that student film. It was a feature film. I actually made it with friends. I learned more, uh, doing that than probably any class, any, any book, anything. Sure. And I mean, because you just learn, uh, you know, not only about how the cameras work and how, how cut work or how cuts work and editing work mm-hmm. and all that other stuff, but you just learn how everybody has to work as a team. Because even with friends on that film, there was friction. And, these, and some of these guys knew each other for like 10 years. And all of a sudden, you know, things are magnified. And all of a sudden, mm-hmm. people are, are, you know, tempers are flaring. And then you're at the end of the day, you're like, well, I'm never talking to that guy again. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, and that's and that's the thing. It's not like, for instance, the guys that I work with. I mean, I, are, are, are friends, but we 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 and we we'll get together, you know, you know, once in a while. But we're not like we have a, we have our lives outside. You know what I mean? We get together primarily to work on the films. Like that's our thing, mm-hmm. and we're not together all the time. <laughs> you know, I mean, even during the course of the year. Like this past year was really busy. We did seven films, shorts. But still, a lot, you know, goes into all, you know, it's a lot. It was, it was a very packed year, and and a, one of those projects was like, you know, five PSAs. So it's, you know, counting one project. So it was all, you know, it was insane. But the point is, there's a lot of time in between, you know, that we're off living our lives. You know, I mean, I'm doing this full time, but they're not. They're coming in. This is a part time gig. Um, uh, you know, the, we, we get our matter of fact, we're all getting together this Saturday to talk, you know, for, for a planning session for 2016. And we, you know, look at our calendars and all that. But there's enough time in between that it's not like we're driving each other bananas. At least I hope not, crew, if you're listening to this. Um, but, <laughs> you know, but but you know what I mean? So it's kind of a balance. You kind of, you know, I would never um, I m- one of my best buddies in the world. He actually works in Japan. He used to li- he lived in Collingswood, New Jersey. Um, he works over there, but the point is, if he were here now, we tried to work together on something many years ago. We were working on a script. Now we're each other's biggest fan. He's like my brother. Okay, excellent writer. One night we were over. We're gonna hang out all weekend long. We're gonna work on this script. We got this great idea, and we're we're, we're having dinner on the first night, and we're going back and forth, you know. And suddenly, I realize this is not gonna work, you know. Um, I mean, and, and this guy is like, you know, as tight as can be, we're, you know, to this day. But again, just because you're best buddies with somebody and just because they're creative doesn't mean it's going to work out as a, they're going to make a great team member. And nothing to say, say against him, but it was, it was, this was like, he's like, basically you could tell he wasn't into it for this. You know, he wasn't going in that deep, you know, you know what I mean? Everybody's got to kind of have be, be at the same level, you know, uh, as far as where they're at, like. They've got to be in it for uh, essentially close enough. They have to line up for the reasons that they're in it. They're, they're in it for similar reasons. Um, and there has to be some kind of distance. There has to, there has to be that, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's like a band, you know, if you're touring all the time, you're going to kill each other. But if you're just going into the studio to make some song, you know, record some songs or whatever, and then you, you go away, you know, you, you, you kind of, you protect that. And I think we have that, you know, we're fortunate that way. But, um, but anyway, that's, uh, it, it, it just, I'm, I, I'm talking it to death, but I do think it's important. 
um, that, you know, it, not just anybody, just because like they have the resume, they're not going to be able to, they're not necessarily going to gel with you. They could be wonderful at what they do, but they could also be a real prick. As you yeah. were talking about your, your <laughs> cinematographer friend, the circus man. So, yeah. You know. And uh, that was the last, that was the first and last thing we worked on together. He and I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 we didn't even sit, we didn't even shake hands or say goodbye. It was just, I, I don't even know what the last words I said to, said to him were. And honestly, uh, I wish it would have been, you know, f off, but um, yeah. it it probably was something to do with a technical issue or something. I I, I probably right. uh, it, it was it was <laughs> yeah it wasn't a good shoot. So but but yeah, no, that's an excellent point though, Richard. You know, you have to have that team that you know everyone has the same singular vision. And um, you know, uh, I actually was working with you know a producer and uh, recently, and he he said something to me about you know if there's a problem before. Everything as as you move towards filming, he's like everything becomes magnified, and then when you get mm-hmm. to the actual film, you know the the set, the uh, shooting date, he's like, believe me, it becomes so magnified, and he's like, and that's when you know fights break out, and he said, you know, because it's art and art is passion, and you know he's like, you've got right. people arguing, and he said, that, you know, that's why he tries to anytime there's a fight, you guys gotta you know try to try to put these fires out before they happen. Right. I will tell I will tell you something that that. Um, you know, over the years doing this at first, I was never really, I, I never wanted to run my own gig, but I, I always wanted to work for somebody else when I was younger, you know, just be a writer, do my thing, have other people produce and direct things. And I enjoyed that. I enjoyed watching people, the other people's ideas. I'd say, okay, I wrote this and, and, and let me see what you do with it. But as, as I said, okay, well, if I'm going to stay in this business, I have to do this. Well, okay, fine. I'll do this. I'll direct. I'll do this. I was never like something, oh, I got to do it all, man. You know, <laughs> it's never, I was never into that. Um, I just wanted to tell a story. And then I was like, okay, well, I guess I have to do this now. Okay, well, I have to do this. But you do, you do have to be a dad or a mom or, you know, or you have to be a parent. Um, and that becomes, you know, uh, very clear the more you do this, that's your job. You are everybody's dad on set. And I don't say that in a, you know, uh, looking down on, oh, you're, you know, everyone's a child, but, you, but you have, you know, there's a, you have, it's better to be dad than be Hitler. You know, you don't want to be on the set telling, oh, that's right. I mean, you don't want to be on the set, you know, telling everybody, you know, uh, giving them no room to, to do what they do best. And I say that about, crew and I say that about actors um, you've got to give them room you've, you you know you've got to build in space for people to you know it's like this is why I hired you because you're really good at this well let them be let them do that don't try and make them over don't try you know work with work with what you have and you know celebrate that but you know it's it's you have to be their dad too you have to take care of everybody and it's important to encourage people and let them know. And I think a lot of times on, on set, it's really difficult because you're, you know, you've, got, you've only got so much time and uh, this is your budget. You know, it's usually next to nothing. And, you know, you're trying to get things done before this time so we can all break for lunch so nobody will scream and get upset. Not that that happens over here, but um, you kind of have to, you know, um, you have to make that time to let people know how much they're appreciated and what, what a good job they are doing. And I think sometimes we think, Oh, well, you know, we're busy. You know, we don't, we don't have, we don't have time for that. You know, we got to move, we got to move. Well, you know, this is a part-time gig for just about everybody, but you meaning, meaning me, you know, you better let everybody know how, how much they're appreciated and they are. And that by itself engenders good work, you know, because people need that feedback, even in a shit storm. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, That's and I great. think, you know, so um, all these things that we take for granted, uh, you know, they're, they're the, you know, the ingredients in a, a successful recipe, you know, for, to make a good product, you know, and, and uh, so anyway, but uh <laughs> That's, uh, I, I don't know, you know, when you get this old, you just go on like this. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I just, I just feel the need to like, you know, you know, um, uh, I just, it, it, there's just, there's just so many things. I mean, I just think treating people and having the right people and treating those right people well, I think is important. That's all. 
Well, I have that effect on people, Richard. Uh, I, I usually ask a question and <laughs> they answer and they're like, sorry, Dave, I don't know where that came from. I don't know why I went on that on that tirade there. And I'm like, I, I yeah. just have that effect on people. I don't know. Uh, I guess it's just uh, my, my interview style. <laughs> Somebody once told me uh, when I was on the set of NFL films, they said, Dave, if you're ever confused about who has the most important job on a film set, right. it's craft services. That's true. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Amen, brother. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, we, we uh, for, for the longest time, my, my wife, who's also my co-producer, you know, at all this craziness, uh, she's awesome. And, and she, uh, uh, you know, Linda would, she's also an incredible cook. Well, she would, you know, cook up a storm, you know, for everybody. So, and everybody would look forward to that. So yeah, you know, to marry a good cook or be one yourself, but, um, but you're absolutely right. Food is so important. Just like, you know, that's part of treating people well, you know? Um, I mean, we, we're fortunate enough in that, in this, in this particular operation here, I mean, the majority of our work is, like I said, it's for, it's for nonprofits. And everything. Oh my God, how much money could you make from them? We do. Okay. Um, we do. You know, nobody's Donald Trump over here. Uh, you know, we're not making wads and wads of cash, but it's it, it is a it is a living. It's a good living, and but everybody gets paid, and that's something that's important to me. And I know it's really difficult. You know, you want to like you know you want to if you can't if you don't have the money, you want to make sure everybody gets treated well. The craft services are great, and also uh, that you know give them uh, something on the back end or whatever. If it's a you know it, you know you're trying to you know really sell it and take it out there if it does anything. Absolutely, I agree with all that. But one thing I wanted to do was um, I wanted to make sure that you know we treated this as a business and not just uh, an art project. And I wanted to make sure that uh, we everybody got paid, you know, and and paid pretty well. Um, and tried to do that uh, from the very start uh, because I never wanted to be. I worked in the theater as I said earlier when I was young, you know, and. You know, that was a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get you that check. Literally, a year later, you know, sometimes. Um, so that's not cool. And I, I mean, there were other people who were getting hired for gigs that were involved in the theater, like they'd wind up getting, uh, you know, a uh, commercial or something local. They'd never get paid, you know. I mean, I hated that. I just thought, you know, everybody works hard, man, you know, and uh, try and do as much as you possibly can. And sometimes it can't be cash because nobody's got it. I totally get that. But man, give it everything you have. And I know food is always appreciated. Good food is always appreciated. But, um, but you know, like I said, it, it's, um, if people feel that they're being taken advantage of or not appreciated, it's not a crappy film, you know, and they can be polite, but they're not going to be giving you their best. So, it's like any business. You just have to treat your, uh, you know, and I, I think that's the thing. When you, when you hire people, do you look at them as, how do you look at them? Do you look at them as like employees or do you, how do you, I mean, what, how do you, what's the, what's the mix when you do something? Well, when I do something, uh, it, it basically depends. I, I, I try to be friendly to everybody and, you know, some people are all business. And, and then at that point I go, okay. I mean, they're not being rude. They're just, you know, they're right. not being overly friendly. They're just, Okay, that you're you're an employee, and we have a contract, and that's fine because you know that person, you know, as long as they're not you know doing anything wrong. I mean, you know, they're they're not friendly, but they're not rude. They're just sort of benign, right. and you know, at that point, you know, I just you know handle it as it comes, you know. But there are some people I I I've, I work with even to this day where they're you know we're we're friends, you know, and and um you know we're we're Facebook friends, we're you know we they they we talk to each other, you know, maybe once a month or or maybe a little little more, maybe a little less. But you know, you take into account those relationships. You know, somebody once told me I, I went to this entrepreneur course and uh somebody once told me something that makes perfect sense now and he said your net worth is your network, or your network is your net worth. Something I've mm -hmm. already, I've already yeah. butchered the quote. So. <laughs> no, no, I totally get it. I, 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 yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, you're only as good as the people you know around you. And I mean, you, uh, you know, if you're doing good work, you're attracting more and more good people. I um, mean, that's the thing. Over time, I mean, the you know, if if you're and and I, I will say this, and, I, and of course this is going to come off as like you know it's you know oh yeah we're just a big party or something, but it's 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 good it's important to have fun, man. And I know it's hard, like you know it's it's really stressful, isn't it? I mean you're doing this stuff and you're 
you're running the show and you're trying to get everything done. And, and, but my God, if you're not having fun and if you're not stopping for a minute and, you know, having a few laughs, I mean, I mean, that's just, suicide. <laughs> you know, you got to laugh. You got to have, you got to have some, you know, there's always something, no matter what we're doing. And we do. And I think maybe we laugh a lot because we do such heavy material. I think you have to laugh. I mean, haven't you, I, I've read these things about horror films, um, you know, the old hammer horror films uh, from the sixties and seventies. And they'd be, you know, you know, these like totally gruesome things going on and then they break and they would just be like totally total pranksters and just crack it up, you know, in between takes. Well, we do all kinds of things. Mean, we're doing things about suicide. Okay. We're doing things about problems. We're doing things about family splitting apart. This is year in and year out. You better have a sense of humor, you know, and it's important to have a sense of humor no matter what. I just think when you're working with this stuff, because it's just, it lightens the load. Everybody's got to, you know, you, you have to find the fun, even in a crappy shoot, you have to find something fun, you know? And if you're working to find that, the crew will go with you and the actors will go with you too. And, and we've all been there when the shoots have not been more. I mean, I'm sure you have your own stories about when things have not exactly when you told me one already, but when things just, things are, they, it gets done. And you know what, in the final edit, it might look wonderful, but you know, it was hell to get there, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I was actually just thinking today about this one, uh, this one story I have, and it's real quick. And then I'm going to want to ask you about Maple Avenue. Um, you know, uh, I was shooting a film and I think it was probably 2009, 2010. And, uh, I, I shot it with a, 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 it is a totally different cinematographer. And, uh, he came down and we had all this gear for this outside shoot that we were going to do. And just as we were about to step foot outside, boom, a rolling thunderstorm comes in. And I oh, mean, man. drops water, like, I mean, just cascading water down the, uh, down the sidewalks, down the road. Uh, oh my God! And uh, and we're like, well, let's wait this out. So we're waiting there for two hours, and finally, like, he looks up at the sky and he goes, "Dave, th- this isn't even going to break soon." He's like, "This is like," he's like, "I'm, I'm going to have to get home." He's like, "I don't want the, the my bridges to be wiped out," because he he lived in like the middle of nowhere in in North yeah. PA. And I oh, said, you know, I yeah. Com- I yeah. said, yeah, I said, I completely understand. Uh, we never actually ended up finishing the movie. And, um, I, I, we, we could never, we could never sync our schedules again, but, um, but it's just, you know, that, that type of stuff, you know, it, it's, you know, we ended up having, you know, a laugh about it later on. I saw him about it oh, yeah, yeah. later and he was like, Hey, remember that movie we never finished? And I said, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> you know, at the time I was crying, but now I'm like, ah. oh yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, and I'm crying on the inside sometimes when I'm out there doing the stuff think, Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know? And, you know, uh, and, and but you have to, you know, it, it, it's your job to keep everybody, you know, happy and, and light and we'll get through this and, you know, and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, and sometimes they're doing that to me, you know, I'm saying, it's okay, Richard, especially Carol. You know, it's all right. Everything will be fine. You know, it's okay, Carol, you say so. Um, but yeah, you do have to be light about stuff. You know, you, you have to find it or you'll go nuts. I mean, why, are, why would you want to stay in this business if, you know, you couldn't find something to laugh about, you know, but anyway. <laughs> uh, very true. So you know, uh, you know, you, you know, you made uh, so you know, speaking of you know about you know finding work and everything, you know, you made some great work, you know, uh, with Maple Avenue. Thanks. Uh, Thank you. You know, you you know, you're you know, and, and you actually won an Emmy Award, you know, yeah. for yeah. for uh, for Maple Avenue. So I want to take you know, I want to ask you, you know, Richard, you know, how did you you know come up with the idea, you know, for Maple Avenue? Like, you know, how, how did you, you know you, you come to you know start this this whole project? And you know how did everything sort of sort of come about with the with you know filming it and everything like that? Well, we started to you know uh, do some things like I said for the nonprofits and some of the things we were asked to do were, were for teenagers and um, I you know and for families and things and I was just like I was doing them and I was just loving them so much and it was like uh, it was the end of 2002 and and uh, I just had it in my mind I thought you know there's so many things that I would want to do just on my own you know because you're I get to do pretty much. I'm given a, you know, a wide berth by the nonprofits to do what I want to do. They will say, this is what you need. These are the marks you need to hit. This is the information that we're trying to get across. We're trying to reach this particular group, et cetera, et cetera. And they're usually, you know, 20 minute films or, or something. And then they use them to, to break the ice with a discussion. Um, and I thought there's so many things I want to talk about 
you know, and I don't want to feel hemmed in at all by, you know, I want to just talk about what I want to talk about it, you know, and um, that's was Maple Ave. And I, I saw an opening to create the series that we would then sell through educational distributors. And you know what, up until a few years ago, and we still make, we still get our royalties and all that stuff. But up until a few years ago, when they made all the federal cuts um, to education, we were doing really well. Um, once the money went away across the country, you know, we were like all, any, anyone who was providing those types of things to schools was like 30%. Your business was off like 30%. And Maple Lab did really well. And we still do well considering that the schools have less money to work with. But that's another story altogether. But we started with this and I started to go back and, and you know, it was very cathartic because it was like going back to your, you know, going back to high school. And you wind up working through all kinds of things, you know, and it was very cathartic, the whole series. I mean, we did, there's only 10 episodes, but they were done over, you know, 10 years with different arcs, obviously. Um, So you watch them, you wouldn't know that watching it um, because I'd get the money together from the, um, the, the nonprofit work, the contract work we would do. And I put money aside and every year I do another Maple Ave film. Um, and again, they took off right away. I, we did really, uh, uh, our first piece was about um, uh, uh, teen depression. Uh, it's called Jenny's Reasons. It's still out there and it's all over, you know, and, and it, uh, we got, we started to get aired on PBS stations before the end of that year. It was, it was wonderful. We, we, we got a, an Emmy nomination. Uh, these are regional Emmys um, uh, the following year for it. And then for the next one, we got that, you know, and it just started PBS stations for like, this is great. We, we want to do this, but I made the money and, and they were paid for through the sales, through the royalties. And they were good years. Um, uh, uh, during that time, uh, the, the money was flowing, you know, because the schools were getting more money and we were getting it. And, uh, we, we had a very successful, and I shouldn't say we had, it's nothing like it was because like I said, the money isn't there in the way that it used to be, but it's still very successful, but it, it really, it really helped us in, uh, during, you know, a lean year or two because the royalties that were coming in from Maple Ave were enough, uh, to see us, uh, to see us through. And I mean, and, you know, my wife has said that many times, thank God for Maple Ave, because you're going to have dry years. You're going to have years where, you know, you, you know, you don't have as much work. And, um, fortunately they're not, they're few and far between, but they are there and, uh, you should have a backup and I, you know, and this was designed to not just be a side project for me. It was designed to be a, a separate, um, source of income for the business. So we had that, we own Maple Ave and everything that came from that went to us. Of course, the distributors took, take their cut or whatever, but we made a, we made a pretty good deal on royalties. And, uh, that's something that I would say, uh, regardless of what you're, what you're doing with your film, uh, aspirations, you know, make sure that you have something that can, you know, you can make some extra money on the side with doing what you love. And you might have to, you know, be a little creative about it and think about, well, what would that be? But you kind of do have to think outside the box. Well, where can I, where can I plug my talent into that I can actually make it commercially viable? And you, you can't think in terms of big, big, gigantic things. You have to think, well, you know, what, what can I manage? What can I do really well with what I have? And we started out, you know, it was, when I started out doing this, it was one camera, a boom mic, me and another guy. You know, me and Adam, and that was it in the very, 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 very beginning, you know, like 15 years ago. And then it grew and grew and grew and, you know, but, you know, you work with what you have and you, and I think you have to make the most of what you have. You have to, you, you can't take indie equipment and try and shoot something that looks like, you know, 20th Century Fox produced it. You're not going to get there. What are the strengths of the equipment that you have? What can you do? What can you make look really cool? really great. That's something that's going to help tell the story. You know, um, you know, we all wish we had better, you know, cameras all the time. You're never going to have, you know, every camera you have is going, oh, I wish I had this instead. Oh, I wish I had that. But the point is you have what you have. And John Lennon had this great quote, and I'm going to butcher this, so we'll be even. <laughs> um, had this great quote uh, years and years after the Beatles broke up and uh, something about, 
you know, he may not be the best guitarist in the world, but he can make it howl. You know, he can, he can make a noise, uh, you know, that means something. And I love that. And I think that's what you need to do with your film equipment. You need to play it the best way you can play it and get the most out of that, you know, piece of equipment that you possibly can, you know? Um, and I think too often people are always looking over the horizon, you know, like, like, Oh, oh you know, I'm going to, like you were talking about, Oh, I'm gonna get that red camera, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get this camera or hell the DSLRs, man. I, you know, everybody's so focused on the new equipment, get something that you you're comfortable with that you can really do good work with for what you're doing, you know? So, I mean, if you're doing an action movie, you're screwed, but you know, (laughs) just, you know, but there are a lot of things. You do things like we do, which are intimate character driven pieces. And that's all we do. Even if it's a horror theme, you know, ghost story woven in there once in a while, there's still character pieces. Well, we can get away with a lot, you know, with, with the equipment we have, which is, you know, it's still, I mean, uh, Panasonic HPX 170s. Really? I mean, you know, they're, they're gone, but we, we, we get a lot out of them, you know, and I love, uh, people are complaining about this, uh, uh, Panasonic DVX 200 that just came out like, Oh no, no removable lens. I'm like, what are you doing? Exactly. When I hear people talking about that, say, what, what are you doing? You know, like it's, I know people need different lenses for, for different types of films, but come on, we don't all need this stuff, you know? I mean, it just seems like sometimes there's an obsession over the equipment. You know, once I get that equipment, then I'll make this movie. And once I get that, once, you know, it's like, make it, shut up and make it, you know, what do you have? Go figure out a way to make it look really good. If people are winning awards with cell phone videos, you can make it with whatever equipment you have on hand, you know, yeah. tell a good story. I, I had on uh, Sean Baker, he came on the, uh, the podcast uh, probably 20 or so episodes ago, and he wow, just okay. well, for Tangerine and Sean Baker. Uh, you know that he shot Tangerine with an iPhone, and they just won Best Film at the uh, the Gotham uh, Film Awards. There you go. Right. Right. Exactly. I mean, it's 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 all in what your material is, and you know, I, I I've heard other guests on your show say the same thing. It's it's about you know, well, your material is is what's going to get you through. And, and, uh, you know, and, and using, using what you have to the best of your ability, you know, um, but man, people, I think people, I think people make the mistake of trying to imitate something they, you know, trying to look like something they saw. Oh, I really like that movie. I want to make one of them too. You know, well, it's great to be inspired, but my God, you know, don't be a monkey, you know, don't, 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 you know, just get out, you know, try and, you know, uh, it's like you're trying to wear the clothes that the popular kid has, you know, I mean, just forget about it. Just wear your own damn clothes, you know, um, and, and be happy with that. You know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's a truth. And, you know, uh, you know, I've had other people on the show too, and they said the same thing, this obsession over gear, like they spend so much time online researching these packages, these camera right, packages, yes. and then they never actually shoot anything. And, you know, Jason Brubaker, who's been on the show before, he, he's a distribution specialist. And that's all he was talking about. He said, you know, everyone will ask him every month, these same people, hey, Jason, have you seen the new Canon DSLR package? And what do you think of it versus the new, I don't know, whatever, red package? And he's like, you right. know, well, I, he's like, what are, you, what are you making here? He's like, you know, what, what, you know find out what you're making <laughs> yeah. and then, you know, go from there. He's like, you know, I, and he said every, you know, every month, he'll, he'll get a question like that. And, you know, he's like, he actually made a podcast about it. He's like, stop obsessing over these uh, camera packages and just go out and, you know, just, just make something. Right. Well, I mean, it, the part of it is, I mean, it's the culture and, you know, that we get into a long sociological discussion about, you know, the, the greed is good eighties all the way, <laughs> you know, the, you know, uh, you know, but I mean, it, it you know, there, there was, there has been such a, um, we, we've turned into eighties Japan basically, you know what I mean? It's just this, uh, um, you know, uh, checkbox, you know, and superficial, make sure we have this and we have that. And you're just wasting a bunch of time, you know, just tell your story. And the problem is these days, everybody's got such a, uh, you know, a hard eye on getting into the biz, you know, that they're, they're too focused on working in Hollywood and you shouldn't be in this business. If you're not going to be happy just working in this business 
on whatever level, you know, I mean, if you have to tell stories, you're going to tell stories no matter what, you know? Yeah. And, and if, if you, if you say, well, I'm not going to do it if I can't get this, well, then you, you're, you know, you're a hobbyist or you're, you know, or you're misguided, you know, you've got your, you know, your, your dreams misplaced or something. I mean, you have to feel like you, if you didn't do this, you'd die. And I, I know that's overly dramatic, but that's how, how I feel. Yeah, and you know, I, I feel the exact same way. Yeah, I, I know and, exactly. and you know you'll do it forever. Yeah, because uh, you know I was talking to uh, Alex Ferrari about that because uh, on his podcast he had uh, Dove Simons, uh, Dove Simmons, Simons. I I I, right, I, right, I, right. I always yeah. butcher his name, but uh, yeah. he uh, you know, and and Don was saying the same thing. He's like, you know, he's like, I I don't understand, you know, why some people just don't go out there and make some of this stuff. Uh, you know, and you know, I, I have you know what I what I always call are there's there's a lot of pretenders out there. Um, mm-hmm. and what these pretenders do is you know they always they're always sitting on the couch and they go on Facebook and they always talk about they're going to make some movie and they're going to cast this and whatever or they may they even may have a one sheet but they never make mm-hmm. the movie you never see right. it it never goes anywhere and you're like you know what the hell is going on here you know mm-hmm. yes I mean why well, you know I mean it, it's. They're, they're, they're more concerned with thinking that, you know, they'll make this movie and then everyone will understand them and all their personal problems will be solved, you know, and that's, you know, and, and they'll be rich and never, you know, I mean, people think about that stuff all, I mean, things like that. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have this, or if I have this car, or if it, you know, I mean, I, I think it's the same sensibility. So, um, but, you know, I, I, I wonder, I mean, this is, this is about film festival stuff. I, I wonder there's a lot of talk about, you know, we just want to, we just want a good story. We don't care about your budget. We just want a good story. We're tired of seeing reels that are trying to sell what you can do with a camera. Fair enough. But I'm going to ask you a question because I'm dying to ask somebody else who, who, who do you, do you think that, I mean, my feeling is they're talking out of both sides of their mouth. Um, sometimes because, something like Sundance or slam dance or, 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 you know, they, they have become a long time ago. They've become uh, you know, it's a Hollywood thing. It's not like, it's not like really, you know, you, you don't, you don't, you don't get down in dirty films. You get, you know, cleaned up, scrubbed up, you know, it's an indie film. And yet you find out later that basically it's the son of the, uh, of the guy who runs this company and, you know, who works at Warner's or Warner's or, you know, or something like that. It's like, and they're being passed off as indie films. Do you honestly believe that? It, I'm just saying it's very difficult to, to break through. Um, I don't know that they're totally sincere about that. Like, I think they wish things were like that, but I think everybody is caught in this, well, we want to program, you know, commercial looking, even if they're not commercial, they, they've got to be commercial looking. Whereas years ago, people would take chances and they'd be cool with all these different looking types of things. And I, I just get the feeling that that has really quietly just kind of, you know, gone away and that it's a lot of happy talk. What do you think? Well, what I think a lot of the festivals want to do is I think they want like the next indie darling. And that's why, you know, if it's something like a Clerks or something like a Tangerine or something like a, um, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head, but, you know. But Dave, would you, would you, would you see, uh, my, I mean, that's a great, it's a great example. If Kevin Smith submitted Clerks today. Yeah. Dot, dot, dot. Well, what? What, what do you think in this in this environment? If Kevin Smith submitted Clerks to Sundance or Slam Dance, and I'm picking on them because they're so huge, <laughs> what, what do you think would happen? Oh, I, in, I, in 2015, I, I have no doubt that uh, it would be rejected. Absolutely, that, that's my whole thing. But they talk a lot. Oh yeah, we want the next Clerks. You know, that's pretty much what they're saying. And yet they have no no they have no room for that. So indie has truly. Indie is truly, uh, I mean, these days you're really indie. I mean, there's, you know, it's, it's, you, you are really reliant on social media, on the internet. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, we've got a lot of love there, so I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining, but I'm just curious because 
you read, you know, we all pick up filmmaker and, you know, all that stuff. And we read the, you know, this, that, and the other, all the books. And I just, I just think there's a, I look at the things that, that they wind up picking and programming. And I wonder if, you know, and they talk one way and I wonder, it just doesn't seem like it's just, it's just become like everything else. It's just one big, huge, um, shiny, you know, thing that's just kind of regurgitated over and over again. I don't know. I just, I just wondered what other people thought of that. I feel like I'm the only person kind of sitting around like reading these things saying, thinking, yeah, but you did this, you're saying this, but you're doing this. I just don't see it. I think you have to really dig deep into a lot of these film festivals, these smaller film festivals or whatever, to really find people who are doing very different things. And I guess it's just a symptom of a very segmented culture, you know, with the internet, we all get to, you know, go wherever we want to go. You know, Hey, we're the red hat club over here. Okay. Yeah. We love people with red hat. I mean, so maybe that's really what it is. I'm, I'm thinking out loud here and I'm going to stop right now. There. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I see it too, where, uh, you know, I, I see a movie come out or I see, you know, something, uh, you know, somebody uh, get accepted to a, a film festival and I, and I look and I see, oh, well, they have the same last name as, you know, a pretty famous director. Yeah, it's their son or daughter. And, um, you know, there, there's a I, – I, I won't mention the name, uh, but yeah. uh, there was a person who I was talking about uh, to, to a couple of other people. And I said, you know, I said this person would not have a job if if this person's dad was not a pretty famous director. Uh, well, that's kind of what I'm talking around yeah. in a lot of cases. Yes, and and that's what I mean. And yet we're reading articles in Filmmaker. There, you know, I mean, uh, for instance, and I, I like I have a subscription, so I love Filmmaker. But I, you, you do it do, during the course of the year, you do read about how hard this indie filmmaker worked, and then you kind of dig into the details, and you realize it's um, Hollywood kid. You know, <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, great, yeah, you're just like me. You know, <laughs> come on, you know, so I, I don't know. But anyway, that's a whole other gig. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, one of the things that I was just talking today with uh, with some filmmakers was, you know, is there too many movies? And there was an article that came out in Salon.com today about indie film being, uh, you know, the next Walmart. And basically, you know, there's this there's so many movies out now uh, because, you know, there's, you know, everyone who has an iPad is now a filmmaker. So right. if, if, you know, there's so many of these movies, how do the quality movies rise to the top amongst all this noise? Because we've never had this much noise before. There's so no, much that's noise. True. And, and, you know, how does a, a quality movie rise to the top? And what I said was, was that I feel that there were always, the quality movie will always rise to the top. And I, here's why. I think when, if you, you know, you, you have your friends who you talk to about movies and they're one of mm-hmm. someone's going to say, hey, listen, I saw this movie the other day. It got, you know, whatever it might be called. And it was actually, it was pretty damn good. And, you know, word does spread. And we, we trust our friends more than any, any critics, sure. anybody sure. else. And that's what I, I, I still, I, I still cling to that, that that's, you know, people will still, you know, uh, talk about, you know, the movies that they liked. So that way the good movies do rise to the top. I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I think that you're, you're going to go out of your way. Um, the people who would never watch certain movies, 30 years ago, we're still not going to watch those same movies today because they'd rather watch reality TV or whatever. You know, I mean, that's just always been that way. And yeah, we do have a glut of films, but I agree that if something's good, number one, if something's good and somebody put their heart and soul into it, they're up. Well, the chances are they're pushing the hell out of it. You know, they're trying to find their audience, you know, uh, and they will find their audience and you will hear about it. Um, you know, and uh, again, I, I, I'm making it sound like it's heaven, but social media has been, you know, very good to us. And uh, when we started the Mancelli offshoot, we did our first Mancelli film, uh, which is kind of a artsy horror films. Uh, actually, they're just family dramas dressed up as artsy horror films. But, uh, you know, we did the Halloween Girl, and they have been uh, – we have only had it out since October um, on uh, Vimeo, on demand. They've been they've been wonderful, uh, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I'm there pushing it, or we. I did hire a small uh, PR firm uh, for, for you know pretty good money, uh, and we're you know again, you, you you the film will find its audience, but and, and if you really put that much into it, and it's a good film, you're going to be pushing it and finding a way to get it out there. 
and it will find people who appreciate it. You know, I, I believe that too. Yeah, and, you know, and people will hear about it. Yeah, and I think one of the key key things to remember is, and I, I just the podcast before this is going to be with Brad Wilk, and and Brad actually works with Smart Creative, and Brad and I talked for over an hour just about finding your audience, finding a market. Mm-hmm. And, and we didn't even hit the, the, the tip of the iceberg with that because one of the things is, but I mean, we covered a lot of ground, obviously, and, you know, in an hour and a half. But, you know, one of the things was, you know, finding that that audience before you start making your film now. So when you when you mm-hmm. launch, you know, like if, 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 you know, anyone listening to this was thinking, you know, how am I going to find an audience for my movie, whatever that might be? If you actually before you start, you know filming and before you start everything else, if you just have a social media channel, whatever that might mm-hmm. be, uh, whether if your target audience is on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever they're on, and right. and focus, you know, not all but most of your efforts on that and make it look flick and you know, and not just and, and you and the, the other trick of it is you can't just keep posting about your movie. It can't be kind no. of like, here's our camera, here's our this <laughs> it, it has to be right. you know, I don't know if you know who Gary Vanerchuk is, but um, I, I, I know the name and I, I can't, I, I'm, I, I'm having a brain fart here, so you, you'll have to help me out, but I know the name. <laughs> he, he's, uh, he's the marketer and he's also like a wine millionaire. Uh, like he opened, he started, he, he took over his family's wine business and okay. he took it from like this, you know, a smaller type wine business to like this pretty big wine company now. But, um, what he, what he does is he calls it, you know, jab, 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 right hook, which basically means give, 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 ask. And, you know, he's, he said, you know, people get on social media and all they do is talk. They don't listen. Mm-hmm. And he said right. that that's what, you know, a lot of these movies, uh, all I see is them talking a lot. They tell you how great the movie's going to be. Hey, our Kickstarter's coming soon. You better donate. And then when the Kickstarter happens, I mean, honestly, Richard, forget about it because they're, they're tweeting everybody. They're at Tom Cruise. They're tweeting at, you know, uh, mm-hmm. random strangers. And I'm like, w- where's the relationships in this? Like, right. you're just, now you're just like a, uh, you know, a person on the street that's just coming up to other people screaming in their face going, Hey, give me money. It's, it, you, you nailed it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's exactly it. I mean, and, and I, I, you're right. I mean, it's, it's gotta be give and take. And you have to wonder about an artist who is so self-centered, you know, so obsessed with their thing that they're not, they don't want to do give and take. Number one, you need to, even if you don't want to, you know, even if you are self-centered, you want to fake it, you better, you know, you better fake it. But, you know, it should come naturally. You should want to share things. You should be interested in other people's stuff too. And you can still sell your thing. And it's called establishing relationships. And some people think, you know, and I thought Kevin McElroy, who's one of our, cinematographers he's also um he's in advertising you know um it, you know most of the time he's you know, that's what he does and he does a lot you know our posters and stuff he's wonderful and he he says you know everybody thinks you're going to set up like you were saying you're going to set up your twitter account you know and throw up a couple things and that'll do the trick it's about relationships and you have to know who you're making. I shouldn't say who you're making the film for. You're making the film for you. You better be making the film for you, but you also have to know who it's going to appeal to other than you. And, uh, you know, we, we reach, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the, the audience that, that for, for instance, for the Halloween girl are, are, are not much different than the audience for Maple Live or any of the other team related things that we've done. And we've done team stuff to death. So I know the audience and we had worked on something about a year ago. There was a, um, um, a, a pilot I'd written for, uh, uh, that I was thinking, you know, I, I had an excuse to write a pilot. So you got to write this. Okay, I'll write it and see what happens. And there was some interest and nothing happened with it, which was, was fine. But it got me thinking about, I was writing for that, building on that particular target audience. And that's what led me to the Halloween Girl and writing that and doing that film and starting up Mad Shelley. In addition to outreach arts, you know, which is where Maple Avenue all that comes from. Um, but knowing that that would be our audience, you know, I mean, I, I don't mean it disparagingly, but you know, geek girls and things like that. We we have some strong female characters in the films, and and uh, and um, I think they really they're they're very uh, emotional, very uh, you know, family driven uh, pieces and. Um, 
you know, so we did know who we were going after, but you have to know who you're going after. You also have to, you have to start those relationships early. You can't just say, hey, I got a film, you know, you want to see it? Let's get to know each other. You've got to start to, you've got to know that audience and grow that audience um, and, and, and have them in your mind the whole time, you know, you're developing something, you know, you can't just say, now who, who wants to see this? You know, yeah. you have to have a plan. Yes. And, 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 then, and then it's easy to communicate with people and do the back and forth, like you were saying on Twitter and on Facebook or wherever, because you, you feel like you do have something to talk to them about, you know? So, yeah. And, and you know, and you know, you also have to build a team and that's the other thing yeah. too, you know, uh, Brad and I were talking about was, you know, some people try to do everything themselves and you get crushed because crowdfunding is a full-time oh, yeah. job and trying to do all this other yeah. stuff and just, just building a team and just saying, you know, Again, if, you know, if I, even if you can't pay that, those people work with them and say, what, you know, I can't pay you, but what could I, you know, what, what, what could we do where, you know, uh, you, you could help me out. And what I've ended up doing is, uh, you know, years ago when I, you know, I couldn't pay people, uh, I would say, listen, I'll work on your film for free. If you work on my phone right. for free. Right. That's, that's the kind of stuff we were talking about earlier. That's exactly it. Everybody has to be getting something out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not all because, hey, you're just such a wonderful guy, you know, and we're just going to donate our time on the, on the weekends or whatever, you know, and, and no, everybody has to be getting something out of it. And, and you know, I think as the, you know, the, the head of the project, you have to honor that, you know, um, and, 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 uh, and, and make sure everybody is having a good time and getting what they want out of it. And if it's working on their film and helping them out, then that's what you're going to do. Uh, by the way, I do want to put a plug in for one of the things that Outreach Arts does, the, the company that, that our main business. Um, we we also introduce uh, the kids that we work with to the industry that are interested in getting into the industry. So that's a huge part of what we do. Um, so, you know, the kids might not be getting a lot of money at first or whatever when we're doing things, with, you know, if they got a small part in a film or whatever. But, you know, gradually over the years, they might work themselves up into a, a lead role or something like when we were doing Maple Ave. Um, and then we would also work with the kids if they were interested in getting into the business and teach them about, you know, uh, all the stuff that you and I already know about, you know, about, you know, the casting agencies and the agents and how, how the things work and what you do and show up on time, you know, all that, all that stuff. But you t just teach them about the nuts and bolts. So. That's something I forget as we talk about all this stuff, but that's a huge part of what we do, kind of connect kids to um, the industry and get them started. And, you know, that, that's absolutely awesome, uh, Richard. You know, uh, you know, having that outreach and, you know, giving them, a, you know, an outlet um, and giving them an opportunity that they, they wouldn't have otherwise. And uh, you, you also answered my other question uh, previously because I was going to actually ask you, you know, what, what is your next project? And, uh, I mean, you, you did talk about that, but is there anything else you wanted <laughs> to add to that? That that's really we're in the middle of uh, like promoting Halloween Girl now, so that's really uh, you know and uh, and doing uh, you know more of our outreach stuff. We do lots of problem gambling awareness stuff, and uh, um, and but uh, we've become a specialist somehow. You know, I know, but actually, it's just something that's taken off. And we're doing a lot of that work. We want to do a lot of work for veterans. We're trying to do more and more of that as well. So that's a huge thing. I'm still trying to get more of that done. We've done a couple things for veterans. Um, but right now it's the Halloween girl and I'll put in a plug that we got, it's on Vimeo on demand doing well. And we uh, have the DVD Blu-ray coming out, mm, I think next month. And uh, so that's pretty much it. But I, I just want to thank you again, Dave, for you know having me on the show. I, I really enjoy talking to you. This has been great. Oh, you know, it, it's been my pleasure. And uh, by, by next month, Richard, uh, you know, just anyone listening that that'll be January 1st, 2016, um, January, January, 2016, excuse me. Uh, you know, uh, just anybody listening to this, maybe a couple months later. Right. Right. Uh, but, yes. Right. Exactly. Yes. And I will have links to add to all of that, everybody, in the show notes. Uh, you know, where you could, you know, check out uh, all of Richard's work. You know, Richard, and, and you know, as we're we're coming to a close here, you know, is there any any final thoughts that you have that you know you maybe want to put a uh, to that, that will put a period at the end of this conversation? Just truly be yourself, and don't worry, and that's it. That is a great way to end it, my friend. Uh, you know, uh, everyone, you can find me at DaveBullis.com. Twitter, it's at Dave underscore Bullis. And Richard, is there anywhere they can find you at? Yes, uh, they can find us uh, at OutreachArts.com or MadShellyFilms.com. 
for a second, I almost forgot to ask you that question. I just, re- I called myself. <laughs> right. I was like, wait a minute. I did not, I didn't ask him where, you know, where people could find him at. Uh, so I, good thing I caught myself. Uh, We're you know, all over the place. So, you know, <laughs> if you, if you, you know, just put my name in an outreach arts and trust me, you'll see, you'll see all the drama that you ever, you, you did struggle horse. So you're, we're all over the place. And again, everybody, everything we've talked about, uh, I will always link in the show notes. Uh, and the show notes is actually ends up being a, a pretty good resource. Cause I usually put, you know, I put links to everything. I tell you what everything, uh, you know, little annotations of what everything is. Um, so they're actually pretty well organized as well. Um, Cause you know, Richard, I always get an email with somebody saying, well, wait a minute, where's the show notes at? I'm like, well, it, they're, like, they're in like three different spots. So it's like easy to right, find. Right. They're on the podcast itself. They're on the, the, the DaveBulls.com website. I was like, I, you know, I, I can't make this any more easy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, Richard Wilson, uh, I want to say thank you very much for coming on. And, you know, I want to wish you all the best. And, uh, you know, I, I know you'll be working with Mike. So I know, uh, you know, you'll be, I'll you'll see be you Saturday. A, you'll be yeah. having a blast. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the best. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Anytime, buddy. And if you ever want to come back on, you please let me know. All right. Thanks again. Anytime, buddy. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Find Dave at DaveBullis.com. Please make sure to subscribe and share the podcast.